Yeah, is you know, is that really kind of like what it's all about? Because you hit on it, you know, we were talking about augmented reality and the Carolina Panthers or the you know the Halo spaceship mm-hmm. and all that. Like, is it real? I mean, yeah, it's it, it is cool to be innovative and and you know, I would imagine like the Carolina Panthers got so much social media attention from that uh, that production. Um, you know, I'm sure the like the brand awareness piece went up. But you know, what are people? You know, what are the like producers or if you know, these folks looking at um, when they're talking about how to measure like the success of this stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, it's one that we tend to ask a lot because, yeah, because that's one of the things that you need that we have to look at and really genuinely ask about when people introduce things. And that can be, sure. you know, like, all right, if we're going to put a f- an 8K camera on the Skycam, it's like, why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never want to. Uh, it's very, very easy to be tempted by the latest and the greatest. Oh, yeah. But what is it really genuinely bringing to you? You don't want to bring in technology just for the sake of bringing in technology. Now, that being said, I'm a big, big, big proponent of trying new things. I think that sports, particularly live sports production, um, has gotten a little stale in that respect in that we have gotten really, really comfortable with how we watch games. Uh, And, you know, the camera angle from which you watch an NFL game has essentially that camera one has been in the same spot for 50, 60 years, you know, and it's been the same spot. And then, you know, people say, oh, we got to try something new. And then you do a, you do a broadcast from the sky cam and people freak out. They just don't, you know, it's how can you integrate things that actually, make the broadcast better. Uh, And those things are always hard to implement, even when they're good and revolutionary. When the, when the score bug first got onto a broadcast, the people melted down. (laughs) Like David Hill, who was the president of Fox sports at the time, tells the story that he got death threats from fans after they put the score (laughs) bug up on the screen for the, in the first Fox NFL season. Now, can you imagine if they didn't have the score bug up for five minutes, everyone would be freaking out. Like, what are you guys doing? Where's the score? Where's the clock? Where's everything? Uh, So initial reactions to innovations are always fascinating to me because sometimes they're right and it's just bad, (laughs) but sometimes it's like, well guys, especially as we're integrating more of these augmented reality graphics, there were a lot of golf purists who are very, against the top tracer and i don't know how much golf you watch oh uh-huh. but i love the top tracer. The top tracer is yes. amazing now that being said i'm not a golf purist i enjoy watching golf but i'm not a golf yeah. guy by any stretch of the imagination but boy does it make it a hell of a lot easier for me to watch golf and know where the ball's going otherwise it's just a really talented camera operator getting his camera up on the ball sticking with it and then you watch <laughs> it land and you go I-, I don't know i guess it's a good shot it looks like it's yeah. on the fairway but now if i've got the top tracer next to the map of the course that's showing me where the ball is going exactly it's all this data driven stuff that as that becomes more commonplace and becomes more ingrained that's why you're seeing all these player and puck and ball tracking systems that initially feel like, all right, they're giving us some, you know, some hokey analytics about how fast said player is running or, you know, uh, how far that ball is going. Okay. But then all that, and once you get a field of that data and you can start just having things automated, uh, like for example, you know, Turner sports is the new broadcaster of the NHL this year, them and ESPN, uh, the NHL has been trying to get a player and puck tracking system going for a handful of years now. And it's finally starting to really find its sea legs Mm. and, now Turner's doing things like automating graphic enhancements on the screen where, Hey, if a shot goes over a certain amount of miles per hour, it just pops up in the score bug that boom, that shot was 98 miles per hour. And now that was something that used to be a whole process where if they wanted to do that, they needed to build a replay package and then show you how the speed was and da, 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 da. Now you can automate these things based on data where if a shot eclipses 95 miles per hour, it just says, boom, PK Subban, 95 miles per hour, and it just throws it up on the graphic. And you don't even have to think about it. It doesn't even have to be done. Uh, As data 
becomes just more ingrained in all of our sports and in all of our more of our broadcasts. And it's not a matter of trying to force them into the broadcast. They're just there. Um, those are the interesting things that I think drive. And I think to go back to your original question, what's the ultimate thing people want? And it's always attention. Obviously that leads to money and spending and yeah. all that kind of stuff, but the, it's the attention economy now. And that's what everyone is fighting for. And in an era where you can't get people to stay on your video for five seconds, um, they're looking for anything that will keep you engaged, uh, longer and, and engaging with their property and more likely to see ads and tap on ads and things like that, or just have them be in your presence. So in, in an attention economy, anything that's done is meant to make you go, Oh, wow, cool. Engage and stick around. Whether that's the quality of the video, whether that's the engagement tools that might be on a live stream or something with live stats, or whether that's sports betting, which we haven't even touched on yet and making that more interactive. Everything's just competing for your attention and then ultimately your money. Um, and I think attention, uh, some of those things that we've talked about, some of them maybe grab your attention in a shallow way. Like you said, oh, you get some attention one day on social and it blows up on Twitter for a day. But then what? You know, yeah. did it really do anything for your business? Uh, don't know. <laughs> um, you'd have to talk to each of those examples specifically. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't want to speak for them. Um, of course. But, uh, you know, if you can grab attention, there's something that's that's said for uh, uh, in a world where that's the hardest thing to maintain. Uh, if you can grab it, boy, that's that's rare. 